Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Happy Tuesday. This is another day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we're glad in it. So glad to be here with you on this Tuesday morning. And this is May 16th. And we're just moving right along in this month, right along in this year. God is just so great and he's just greatly to be praised. You know, there are so many things that are going on in the world all around us. And, uh, you know, my concept of resolution to the problems that we have in this world is through prayer. I believe that prayer still changes things. I believe that prayer uh, is still effective uh, because the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous uh, avails much. And I think it still works when we pray. So as we're living in these perilous times, these dangerous times, the devil is really running rampant and he's doing everything that he can to destroy and to overthrow uh, the will and the purpose of the children of God. But we have to stand firm, stand fast, be unmovable in times of difficulty because the devil's objective, his objective is to steal your joy, to destroy your family, and to take away the peace that you have in Christ. So we have to understand what's going on around us. That's why it's so important for us to be uh, students of the word, that we are knowledgeable of the word, that we can see the signs of the time uh, that the Bible really reveals to us on a regular basis. Now, you go to church and you hear your pastor or uh, leaders in your church preach about certain things. And uh, what do you do with that information? Do you take heed or do you discard what you hear? soon as you leave and it's so important for us it's so important for us as the children of god so important for us to to be uh to be rooted and grounded in the word so that we don't fall victim to the attacks of the enemy today i want to talk briefly about uh, a topic that kind of popped up a few years back uh, and you can see it on the back of windshields and a lot of pickup trucks around here in texas and it said no fear no fear and you know that can be taken uh, a couple of ways you know I don't fear anybody I don't fear anything or I have the faith to believe that God is with me and I don't have to fear so from a spiritual perspective is where I want to speak on that today uh, what I have as a topic for you for a word of encouragement is no fear no fear what is fear fear is an unpleasant emotion that someone or something is dangerous someone or something is dangerous that's how fear is used in as a noun as a verb fear would be defined as to be afraid of someone or something to be afraid to be fearful uh, of an individual, what they might do, uh, what their conduct might, uh, might, might unfold before you and your loved ones. But I want to talk also about a topic that's kind of uh, old fashioned now, and that's reverence, reverence. And I know sometimes when I talk to uh, people in my age group, we talk about how there was a reverence or a respect for the body of Christ, for the men and women of God, you know, for children of God in general. If you proclaim to be a child of God, then that was a reverence that even the unbelievers had for you. And I can remember how people used to turn their music down when they would pass by the church. I remember how uh, people that were alcoholics or winos, as we would call them, when they would pass by the church and they would see the people coming out of church on Sunday and they would hide their, their, their cigarettes or they would hide their bottle behind them, you know, as, as a matter of respect, you know, you knew the lifestyle that they were in, but they respected the household of God and the people of God so much that they had a reverence. What is reverence? Reverence is a deep respect, a deep respect for someone or something, for the people of God, are for the church. But you see now, 
people will they'll break into a church. You know, that was something that was untouchable years ago. But they'll break into the church and they'll steal the equipment out of the church. They'll steal whatever is, is accessible. The, the television screen, like you see behind me. Uh, they would steal those things from the church. You know, that's, that's where we are now. This is the day that we're living in. So those people, when we talk about no fear, they have no fear of repercussions of what they do to the household of faith. No reverence, no reverence, no respect for the people of God, for the house of God. No respect at all. And how do we, how do we turn that corner? How do we get back to where we need to be? And I believe it's through prayer. The first scripture that I want to share with you this morning is from Proverbs 1 and 7. Proverbs 1 and 7. This is a scripture that uh, I read quite often uh, in my Bible study time uh, with, the, with the Courageous Faith team members. Proverbs 1 and 5 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction the fear of the lord a reverential fear of god i had a reverential fear of my parents growing up i was not afraid of them you know in the in the natural sense of it but i had a reverence for them because i knew if i stepped out of line if i did something that was contrary to 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 their their teaching that there were going to be some consequences. And I had a reverential fear. I respected them. Respected my mother. Respected my father. I respected the elders in my community. People that, 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 that did not raise me, so to speak. But everyone had a hand during that time. You know, where they could tell you what to do. And you had to say, yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. But times have changed. Times have changed. But God has not changed. And I believe that this proverb 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord, this is something that some of us don't have. You know, we don't fear God. We do some of anything in the household of God, say some of anything uh, in the household of God. Uh, whatever goes, goes in the household of God. So how can we say that we have a holy place and a holy ground when we have all manner of sinful things that are taking place in the sanctuary? We have to reverence the sanctuary, reverence the sanctuary. Every day we reverence it. We, we reverence, we respect it. We honor this place. My next scripture I want to go to is uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Very familiar scripture to you all. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Where did this fear comes from? Where did it come from? We're not talking about a reverential fear. We're talking about that fear where you are afraid of someone or something, that you're fearful of the future, what may happen. It hasn't happened, but you build a scenario sometimes and you're, you're in fear based on what could happen, what might happen. But it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but what he has given us is power, love, and a sound mind, a sound mind, where we can rationally think about what we need to do, what we need to say, where we need to go, how we need to resolve an issue that we might have a reverence and a respect for God. And I want to close out with uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, again in verse number one. Just want to kind of use this as a capstone example uh, of this no fear that we're talking about. You know, I want us as children of God to walk uh, fearlessly uh, in our relationship and our conduct with God. You know, our motto here at Courageous Faith is it takes courage. It takes courage to walk by faith. 
and it really does. You have to be courageous to walk by faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. You don't see it. You don't know how it's going to happen, but you just believe God. You trust God that God's going to work it out somehow. Second Chronicles chapter 20, beginning at verse number one. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, here comes some telling you something, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on the other side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. King Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast. So he, he did fear. He was fearful. But then he said, wait just a minute. Let me adjust myself here. Let me, let me, let me make some adjustments. Uh, I can't be the king and I can't lead out if I'm leading out in fear. If I'm fearful, then how is that going to look? How is it going to appear to everyone in my congregation? How is it going to look to all the people that I have rulership over? So what he did, which was wise, he set himself to seek the Lord. I need to have a little talk with Jesus. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. So now he's seeking the Lord. He's fasting. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. I'm going to stop there with verse number four. But how this ends is uh, a fast was proclaimed and they began to pray. And just as sure as you're born, uh, God raised up someone, spoke a word, spoke a word into one of those ministers that were associated with Jehoshaphat and gave him a word of comfort that he does not have to fear. You don't have to fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because God is with you. I talk about the afflictions that we face sometimes. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God is able to deliver us out of them all. So God calm, calmed them through the word. The word came and the word gave him the resolution. So when you find yourself in a time of fear, fright, you're unbeholden of what's what's uh, what's about to happen. Talk to God. Seek the face of God. Don't allow fear to captivate you. No fear. Think about what Proverbs 1 and 7 says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. I believe Jehoshaphat had the wisdom to go to God. When he found himself in a difficult spot, I'm going to go talk to God. I'm going to put the whole uh, province on a fast. We're going to fast and we're going to pray and we're going to believe that God is with us. He said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. We have that word today and we have to have that in such confidence that we believe what the word says. God bless you all. Have a blessed Tuesday. Have a great week. And if it's the Lord's will, I'll see you next Tuesday. And I want you to know that God loves you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed.